okay, I'll try that again. For context, I did such a good job of wiring in my video card that occasionally the computer just bricks itself. Um, so take two. Um, so I had a bit of extra time and I thought I would talk about soft shadows. It's really not a big topic. Once you see the basic concept, you'll see that it's a natural extension of the existing ray tracing stuff. So here we are at the moment. We have our shadow of our ball, um, but it's quite well defined. I actually don't mind it. I think it looks all right. Personally, I'd probably stick with this. Furthermore, over here, we can see that the shadow is quite clearly defined on the wall. It's sort of a bit hard. It's an all or nothing thing. Same with the ball shadow. And then over here, we can see there's a bit of blue shadow where this red light is not getting through. And then if we go off to the side, we have some balls sitting on the ground. I know I haven't really updated this yet, but um, yeah, again, these shadows are quite um, solid, quite hard edged. So what's the general concept? The general concept is, let's say we have the ground and we have a light, should just put that over here. And then we have some imaginary ball. Ugh some imaginary ball over here or something. Now, what we do is if we want to light, if we want to light this fragment here, then we cast what's called a shadow ray between the fragment and the light. And we say, <clears throat> we know where the light is, so we cast in the direction of the light and then we trace through the scene and we find the nearest hit and it turns out the nearest hit is uh, on this ball here. Now that is at a distance closer than the distance to the light and that's a good indicator to us that this fragment is in shadow. And only if the fragment is not in shadow is the light value added to that. So for instance, if we were to go to this fragment here and then cast a light ray, a shadow ray to the light, that's the distance and it's not impeded by anything else. Nothing's blocking it. So the distance to the light is what we expect and then we can light that fragment there. Now, the concept of something being partially in shadow or a soft shadow, if we were to cast like what, out here and out here, these regions should more or less be in shadow. But then as we get to <clears throat> the boundaries, they won't be completely in shadow. Or I'm uh, sorry, maybe this will be completely in shadow, but, but somewhere here might be partially in shadow. Let me give an example. Okay, whatever, I'll pick, I'll pick this region here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called the percentage closer uh, soft shadow algorithm. And the way that works is this light isn't actually a single point centered at the center of mass. It's a thing that exists. So I imagine that I have a bunch of random points, a bunch of random offsets from that center. And I trace to each of those. So I trace to this one here. And that's fine. That's not impeded. I trace to this one here, that's fine, that's not impeded. I trace to this one here. Uh, looks like that one, yeah, it looks like that one's just blocked by the edge here. And then I trace to this part here, and this bit is definitely blocked by the sphere. So I cast four shadow rays, and two of them successfully hit the light, and two of them were blocked. And so I will add 50% of the light value to that fragment. Um, yeah, and that's basically how it works. And the side effect of this is that we'll have a shadow, but then we'll also have some softer edges to the shadow. So let's uh, implement that.
So I will note that this is a little bit of a rough implementation, maybe not the most optimal, but it does <clears throat> directly follow from the concept. So what we could do, actually, let me, let me try to improve this on the fly. So we'll just go to the ray tracer shader and all of this work is going to be in the shader, by the way. And I'll just go down and define some constants. First of all, I'm going to define an offset margin. And then I'm going to define a array of positions. And these are just based on the offset. So these are a bunch of eight offset positions from the center and we can vary this parameter and the set of offsets will change. That was bothering me. <laughs> okay, so then we'll go down. I think there's a function called light fragment. Down here. So here is the light fragment function. Um, the first thing we do is set up the ambient color and then we will keep looking through the lights. But remember, for each light, we want to do this eight times, basically. So let's loop through here. We'll go for OK, so what we'll do is we'll take the light position plus um, thing J of the offsets. And this is going to be a nightmare, but I'll just have to fix this up. So <clears throat> all we are doing is changing the uh, position that we are um, looking at by adding an offset, but everything else. This is just for uh, for pure accuracy. There are some um, optimizations where we make where we shoot one ray first to see if we just hit the center of the light and then test the other points. But that won't quite make it um, accurate. But anyway, the point is, we're just taking the existing algorithm and we're running it eight times. I should probably... Sorry, I know this must be a lot of fun to, to watch, but what happened is I worked the algorithm out ahead of time, then realized that it, it wasn't even 100% accurate. So hopefully this improves it. So again, we unpack the light, and then we vary this. We run this eight times on the light, varying the light position by the offset, and then we'll just go ahead and test that. All right, cool. <clears throat> oh, so there we have it. Now, the only other thing we need to do is we're not going to add the full amount of light. We're going to add one eighth of the um, of the light amount. So I'll see how this goes. Um, honestly, this is going to be a little heavy on the performance, but it might look better. Let's see. So again, I know I keep re-stepping through this, but it's the same lighting algorithm that we did before. We're just running the algorithm eight times, varying the position, and then adding one eighth of the light color. So let's give this a shot. Now, as you can see, um, yes, the shadows are, the shadows are softer they're also a little um, dispersed. So we can change that by varying the light size parameter. Um, but just so we can see, if we look on the edge here, you know, these shadows are, are not too bad. It's sort of a subtle effect, but I'll put the original next to this and we can see that the, although the performance has dropped quite a bit, the shadows are considerably softer. There is still a little bit of, um, of uh, banding, I guess you could call it, where you can see the discrete bands of light on the shadow, but 
in a pinch, this is better than before. Now, just to vary this, we can go back to the start and just reduce that light size a little bit. And that should hopefully reduce some of the dispersion on the sphere. Well, I don't know if we're ever gonna get rid of it completely, but um, yeah, that's something. That's something. And yeah, actually that, that much improves, greatly improves the, uh, the light banding on this shadow. And if we go over to the other section, these shadows are also looking nicer. Anyway, so there you have it. Just a quick method for um, softening the shadows in ray tracing. Again, take it with a grain of salt. Maybe not for performance heavy applications, but um, yeah. Anyway, all the best and have fun. Bye.